Hello everyone, so what I have for you today is a review of um, the rank 1 Kane in Korea actually. So this guy was rank 1 for the majority of early season, like he was rank 1 in Korea. And he actually got perma banned because as you can see from his name, this is what your name switches to in the Korean server when you get permabanned <laughs> and actually when you look at his match history you can kind of tell why he got permabanned I think he got extremely tilted after all of these losses especially this one like holy fuck I don't even know what happened he actually got into it holy fuck dude he had like a d2 in his team you know, dude he was like 932 LP challenger because OPG shows the LP that someone was at in a specific game and he had a D2, D3, Masters and Masters, okay, but, and this guy was also permabound, funny enough. So the game that I picked to review is uh, this one right here, where he went 18, 4, and 7. And at first I tried to download it through OPG, but it's actually so buggy and like, really, really annoying to deal with this OPG, like, client replay bullshit so instead I actually found it on a replay channel on a dumbism replay this is a very good channel if you wanna watch VODs from various players across the world like in challenger like rent one tricks like whatever they have like everything let's get started I'm really excited to see what this guy does differently compared to me and other cane players so let's do it Quality should be fine, so. Alright. So, standard blue start. Pretty much the best clear that Kane has at the moment is um, red side full clear. So, he runs Transcendence, Gathering Storm, and double adapted. That's actually my rune page. Mm. Funny enough, I didn't even copy it from him. That's just kind of what I've been running, and he runs the exact same setup, so. It's kind of cool to see how we both came to the same conclusion about runes. Of course he levels E level 2. I know some game players level W level 2, that's completely troll. You always want to get your E level 2 to travel around and remain healthy in your jungle. Just way more efficient. W basically does nothing for your clear, for your first clear at least. And the now this is what he does different. He will actually level W, level 3. But he did it quite late because he sees that there's a lane state bot lane that sadly we can't really go over. But it just goes to his blue. But he leveled W because he saw that there was an opportunity to gank bot like before he finishes his clear, right? So now he's just going to commit to finish his blue buff. But then I believe he's going to go straight bot. Which is something that not a lot of cane players do that. Um, so he just ends up doing Gromp, I guess. So I'm assuming because he leveled W late, he was gonna point, put two points in Q. But then he saw that he could have maybe ganked bot. Yeah, see, like he's just hard hovering. So definitely interesting. I, I do not do that at all. Like, if this was me, I would have just full clear straight up and then went bot. Oh, he still does get a kill. Fairly easy for him. Now, Seth just kind of runs it down because he has no choice and Aphelios picks up the kill. But yeah. Um, technically, full clearing and going bot would have been the same result. And probably more efficient. But, because this is a Korean server... He is way more alert of like what's happening in the lanes and um kind of prepare himself for the for the scenario where like their bot lane becomes gankable before he finishes a full clear. So a very interesting play pattern actually. Um now he's just typically doing the Raptor Invade. It's also interesting that he does the Raptor Invade before doing Crab. Because crab is kind of guaranteed, but the enemy camps are not guaranteed, so it's better to like go into the enemy jungle to take their free camps. If you have prio, of course, he had mid prio because he's against Cassidy, right? Um, so it's way better to do that. 
then um, I go for crab then further camp so yeah good um, good play pattern so I'm just going back it's probably just gonna full clear his respawning camps up the top and then recall that's what I'm expecting So far it's a very standard early game, aside from the level 3 thing that he did, that is very uncharacteristic of Kane players, but I can kind of understand the idea behind it. It's like he doesn't want to lock himself into a full clear while an opportunity could be happening, I guess. So he didn't end up going to his Krugs before recalling, which I think is really weird. He could have like went for his Krugs that are level 2 and then recall and then went bot side. I guess he sees that like Krugs would be a tempo loss maybe. So now he has like, he can do dragon relatively for free but obviously Kane doesn't really like to solo dragon at level 5. You do it fairly slowly and yep he just goes for the enemy camps. Okay, so what he did instead of going to his level 2 Krugs was go to the enemy raptors that are just respawning that he cleared before so this actually gives him a bigger lead over the enemy jungler because not only is he taking their respawning camp but it's also taking away a resource from the enemy so it's actually interesting that he prioritizes this much taking enemy camps damn i wouldn't even have thought of that i was just like done my krugs and if he did his Krugs before coming to the enemy raptors, it may have been too late, honestly. Or maybe not, because he also had the time to do red buff. But what if he had the time to do red buff? So now, obviously, he expects Shaco to kind of match him in his jungle. So he shows mid lane. His mid lane is not mid. It's always good to pick up free farm as Kane when you can. So Shaco ends up not being in his jungle. <laughs> Not sure what Shaco's doing actually. It seems like he's only been able to clear one side of his jungle and then even match him on the invade, so. Yeah, Kate is hard out jungling at the moment. <sighs> I guess he knew that Shaco was clearing his blue side while he ran straight to Shaco's red side, so. Very, very smart player. He doesn't necessarily spam gank or anything, even if like he didn't like do the full clear and he kept himself available for a bot gank, he doesn't spam gank, he likes to build leads through counter jungling and stuff like that, because obviously, especially on the Korean server, people are not usually going to die to Kane ganks early on, like, dying to Kane ganks early on, you have to kind of misplay. And I'm um, sure a lot of people misplay, especially on other servers like NA and stuff. Like, I can definitely get early ganks off. But um, it's way reliable to build a lead the way this guy's doing it. I was just kind of fucking with Nar. Eh, predicting. Also, very smart that he held onto his W because if he W'd, what would have happened actually? That's a mistake a lot of people do. Even I do this is that when the enemy has flash. And you W, you lock yourself into the W animation for a little moment. And while you lock yourself in the W animation, they can just flash away from you. And what happens is that you're not in, you won't be in range to ult them anymore. You won't be able to stick to them if they just flash while you're locked into that W animation. So he completely held onto his W and uh, predicted his flash with R. So yeah, very, very clean player, even mechanically. Now Kane isn't like the most mechanical champion in the game, obviously, but even, but like, he's got like the Kane mechanics down like 100%. I'm actually impressed. It's those little things, guys, that is like really impressive about players. It's not like the big plays, or like triple kills, like the, the fucking pentakills. And just, sure, those are impressive as well. But especially those little small things that people do to build themselves a lead that sets them apart from other players. 
Because sure, when you're already fed, it's not the hardest thing to do to like get a triple kill or like just wipe the enemy team. But the way he killed Nar there, not a lot of cane players would have done that. So yeah, now he pretty much has access to like the enemy jungle to take again. He is 81 CS to 59 for the Shaco. Shaco is just kind of crying. I just love how every single time he just runs into the enemy jungle because he has mid prio. Obviously, you don't do this shit if you have the castle in your mid lane. And this is when he builds Prowler's Claw. So, touching on the build, he actually does a very similar build that I was doing before running Gore Drinker. So, a tier into Prowler's Claw. Usually, you want to buy your Serrated Dirk first for that spike of damage. And then buy your tier. I don't know what he did this game, though. But um, that's how I would do it, at least. Is to have first buy Dirk and then you get your tier. Because, honestly, you don't have to get tier first buy. Because I feel like that kind of diminishes your early game by a lot. So he's just kind of going. He knows like... Oh! So he used Prowler's Claw on the minion to get close to the real Shaker. And he almost killed him. But he couldn't quite get the ultimate off. Which is a bit unfortunate. Now he's kind of getting poked down by Gnar. But now he gets to ult Kassadin and boom. Yeah. The enemy kind of misplayed there. Like, you don't really run into Kane when you know that he could possibly have ulti. Like, Kassadin thought I could burst him down, but he couldn't. Now, okay, that that was kind of funny. Um, He kind of just ran into the box, but it was a one-for-one one not worth it. It's a 450 shutdown onto the Shaco. But, um... Once he gets his form, this guy's definitely greedy, pretty much like any Kane player. He likes getting any kind of kills that he can. Even if it means giving a shutdown, I suppose. I don't think he thought that he would die, though. He didn't predict the box, because if it wasn't for the box, he would have lived 100%. Oh, he also goes CDR boots. Very fun fact. I've also been running CDR boots every game. It's way too nice, honestly. It does way more for you than Moby Boots in my opinion. Sure, Moby Boots feel really good and like going fast like that over the map is just... It's a very feels good, but Lucidity Boots are like just insane when it comes to like any kind of trading and team fights overall and like skirmishes. And the fact that you can E like so many times in a row, it just feels great. And you just find Cassidy and, and just like that. Prowler's Claw does not leave any counterplay, especially in, in these one-on-one -on -one assassinations that the item was designed for. So, yeah. Now he's gonna do Dragon. He doesn't seem like a player that prioritizes objectives. Obviously, ask Kane. You don't really prioritize objectives until you get your form. Because it's a huge uh, loss of tempo and... I mean, getting pre-14 Herald is good, though. I think that that can get you a lot of gold and shit, especially if you have, like, a good lane to crash it into to finish a tower, let's say. But early dragons, this guy doesn't seem to really care, and I don't either, to be honest. Like, you always want to be farming and building that lead before your form. And now he gets a kill again. Mm. There's also a very interesting concept, is that as a jungler, in general, whenever there's a melee versus melee matchup, especially in the mid lane, because you have, usually, you have more access to mid lane than top lane, regardless of where you are on the map, you're likely going to be closer to mid lane, because it's in the middle, obviously. Me melee mid lane matchups create a lot of opportunities for you to gank, like, they're always going to be fighting, and especially if you have something like a Galio that can set you up, it's really good. So, it's always good to keep an extra eye for those kind of lanes. It's definitely easier to gank than range versus range or range versus melee. Because they're a bit spaced out. So, you know, he's just. 
Farming his camps, keeping himself ahead. He's already level 12 to Shaco's level 9. So like, all of that farm that he took early game and just the lead that he's built throughout all this time is definitely paying off. Like, And now he doesn't stop. Like, he keeps going into the enemy's face, into the enemy's Oh, uh, He still ends up like... Even though he sees with his E that somebody's nearby, he doesn't care, he takes he takes the Krugs because he's blue cane. He can always escape most situations. So this guy just counter jungles on repeat, non-stop. It's actually crazy. He does not stop, he farms the enemy camps on cooldown as if they were his own. I don't even think I, I counter jungled this relentlessly, I'm gonna be real. And he just... Oh, he gets kind of outplayed there. I mean, I'll play it. It's fucking Kaisa, you know? Like, Kaisa with her E and her ult, and she had flash and she had heal. Like, you know, we can't really blame him for failing. Ha! <laughs> the Maokai sapling took the big rap through. Uh, poor Kane. Getting his shit stolen. Mm, but yeah, it's very hard to, like, kill Kaisa when all of her shit is up. Champion's just not... And imagine if Kai's had Gale Force on top of that. She could even kill them, honestly. Depends. Yeah, he's just getting Herald. I'm not a huge fan of getting Herald after level 14. I mean, after 14 minutes. Because... Yeah, like... No, the LB... <sighs> he just kind of goes in. He sees a kill opportunity. He goes in like... I get a swift motion, it just like kind of goes in and boom. See? Like this was extremely well played. Let's rewatch this actually after the end of that night. Just kind of goes in, goes out. And lets his team uh, finish the job because he did a lot to be fair. Okay, okay. <laughs> Man. This Jax really didn't deliver, huh? He even had to blue smite it. But um... Let's go back, because the way he plays this fight is actually really nuts. So, he starts Herald, but I think he does this as a pretext to fight, honestly. He knows that the enemy has um, the Skull Crab, so he kind of baits them into fighting, because I don't think he really cares about getting this. It's more like a pretext, so it's like he goes over this wall. He knows that set W is down, so like he gets a free reset on him. Then he goes like here. Goes through the wall, and then he goes straight into the backline with Prowl's Claw. This is the kind of shit that CDR boots is for, by the way. He wouldn't have been able to E this fast, and reposition this fast, and like, cast all of his abilities, you know, all in succession like that, if he didn't have, like, CDR boots. And also, CDR works on active item. So it's very good for Prowl's Claw as well. Which is on a fairly long cooldown for just a dash. I mean, it's not just a dash, but... It's uh, it's like 60 seconds, so it's definitely good to have CDR on that as well. But yeah, played the fight extremely well. And now he's just gonna... Attacks a wave. I mean, it's not really attacks, because nobody's taking it regardless, but yeah. Just always... Farming, always doing something, like, very, very efficient player. And he's very clean, too. Like, he doesn't go for, like, grief plays or anything. Like, you, <clears throat> like you see me doing. Like, he... Early game, he understands, like, the strengths and weaknesses of his champion, and... He builds himself a, a lead mostly through counter jungling, and, like... The kills that he got early were very opportunistic as well. They were like, their bot lane was really low HP when he went bot. So like, you never, it's really hard for Kane to look for straight 2v2s or straight 3v3s. Because more often than not, you will lose against most meta matchups. But, if you can find those little opportunities to get yourself ahead, it's really important. And use most of your time to build a farm lead. Because when you get level 6, you're actually really strong. Like, your ultimate is a really strong ultimate, especially to set up tower dives. If you have, like, a good lane to gank for and, like, a lane is diveable, your ultimate definitely makes it even more diveable. Or even diveable in the first place. 
So, you know, he's just constantly applying pressure on the map without necessarily going for plays. Like, he didn't just go brainlessly dive to Kassadin, because he also knows that Kassadin has stopwatch, right? But just constantly applies that pressure. It doesn't really let the enemy away back into the game. Like, it doesn't let them... Like, you know, Set is just kind of tilted because he knows that he lost. So he's kind of running around, but yeah. He doesn't let them... Like, he's basically... Okay, now he just sees Shaco with his... <laughs> he just sees Shaco with his sweeper. Which is also something I have to learn to do. Because, dude, I always forget to take sweeper. I know it's kind of... It's kind of ill for somebody that's, like, in Masters, but... I always forget to take sweeper. I don't know why. I just like being able to ward, but like, Sweeper is definitely more important to have as a jungler. Especially against shit like Shaco, or let's say they have a Teemo and shit. It adds to the value, but I think this guy runs Sweeper every game regardless, which, you know, it's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, now he's got his Muramana. Very, very strong item. Even after the nerfs, Muramana is still very strong. And it gets rid of your mana issues, especially if you want to go a uh, sorcery, which I think is definitely the best secondary. Page on Kane. And yeah, look at this. Like, I don't even think he. Okay, to be fair, Set has like quite a bit of tankiness if you look at his items. And the Prowler's Club bonus added damage just completely eviscerated him. I mean, he's also like, you know, six levels up, but. Yeah. And yeah, he's just constantly taking those camps. Like, he does not leave these Krug alone. He does not leave these Krugs alone at all. Like, he does not give a fuck. And now he built his Edge of Might. A very good defensive item that also gives you lethality, damage, HP. Very, very good item, especially in high reload. And like, looking at their comp, you know, they have... I don't think that it's necessary to build Edge of Night against their comp. They don't have like straight up point and click CC that can be annoying, but it's still always good, you know? Like, no matter how you look at it, it's always good to have Edge of Night. Okay, now he kind of griefed his ultimate. I think he dies there, yeah. That was definitely a grief fight. Uh, let's rewatch it. So, you kind of. He kind of just tries to get in, into the set, like he flashes, okay so he flashed to try to like kill the Gnar before he goes Mega, so I understand the idea. Like then he ults the set, but he gets forced out of ultimate because his team actually kills the set. Which is a very feels bad moment for Kane players, like, if, so if you're low HP and somebody kills your target that you're ulting before you go out, you likely just die in a team fight setting, so that's what happened. I understand the idea that he was going for because, you know, especially at this level of play, there's always an idea behind what players do. And I know this king was going for like one shot ignore before he goes mega, but he did get his mega off and his ulti off, which really set them back into the team fight. And from there, it kind of went down because he had to ult somebody. He ulted the nearest target, which was set because he was getting really low HP. Because of that Nar ulti, that kind of just fucked the team fight, and then he just died. So like this was more like I wouldn't say unlucky, but like it went differently as he planned it. Like a really bad play would be something that you think a bad play would be something that like you know. Just doesn't make any sense under any circumstance. But like, if he got to one shot Nar, which that's what he was going for. Like, there's no reason to flash into a Nar unless you're trying to, like, you know, prevent him from going mega. That's what he was, he was going for. And now he just looks for the pick, follows him with Prowler's Call, and then he just waits for his Anyas and he ults. Oh. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I think I know what happened. Basically, Zhonya's... Zhonya's kind of took away all of the timer of the ulti because, you know, you need to have hit a target for at least 2.5 seconds to be able to ult them as Kane. And I think Zhonya's 
just kind of ate all of that timer away. So he couldn't like ult him right away out of Zonia's. And then he tried to like get an auto attack off before ulting. But obviously, that's a bit slow considering he was half HP. So Castan just kind of bursted him down. Damn. So even in Korean Challenger, people tend to do mistakes like that. Like it happens, you know. It kind of shows us that this guy is still mortal at the end of the day, he's still human, like sometimes he also does mistakes. Sometimes he goes for plays that ne don't necessarily go the way that he, that he planned them to do and that's completely normal. And he just moves on with his game and doesn't tilt or anything. Now he did probably tilt when, you know, as, as I've showed you before, like his massive loss streak before the account got permabound. But... When it's a win a game, winnable game like this, even if grief plays happen, like just kind of move on and do your own thing. Like he still takes the enemy camps, he still sticks to his game plan, you know. Constantly applying pressure. What he's doing there is kind of spicy, yeah. Like with the Prowler's Claw, Prowler's Claw helps a lot with killing champions like Kaisa, though. Like holy shit. I can't wait to go back to this island. I, I've taken a bit of a break from solo queue because. I've just been tilt queuing really hard and I could clearly notice that the quality of my gameplay was degrading so I'm just taking a little break and I thought uh, I'll just do this review so we can you know both learn something together because yeah I'm also learning myself watching this you know like this guy definitely plays different than I do and it's very interesting to see in action now obviously you're not gonna be able to do what this guy does every single game like this is one game obviously if he didn't have mid prior and if things were different he wouldn't be able to like perma invade Shaco especially because it's Shaco you know imagine if he was facing Olaf or like Hecarim that would be different but also but you should probably always be asking for Hecarim to be banned I always ban Graves personally because that matchup is just disgusting but um Asking for Akron bans also really good, so now he's just kinda He's getting cucked by these boxes though, holy fuck. And he just kinda flashes in, he's kinda just done, he's like He's like fuck this shit man. Like I'm done with all of you. And he just flashes in and kills the Cassidan. I think he got tired of like running into Shaco boxes and just like watching the one the enemies with one HP dance around him, so he was like, yeah, no, fuck you guys, I'm using my flash. <laughs> and now he's gonna go get a free pick in the side lane. Kane, obviously, a very good champion to get picks in the side lane with. Even if it's an R, it doesn't matter. A fed blue Kane can kill pretty much anything. Now, I have no idea what Kastner was doing there, but I guess he just walked into his death. He just TP'd to to the gray screen, I suppose. So, well, are they doing Baron? Yeah, I think that like Aphelios and yeah, Aphelios and Alka are just joining Baron while he's applying pressure. That's a way to do it. I mean, if you have like a really strong ADC that can do Baron really fast. You can do that as well. The enemy will never expect it to happen, and no, the enemy generally won't really position for a steal because they won't know that you're sneaking Baron. Because people assume that the jungler always has to be there in case for a Baron, but he really doesn't. So this is nearing the end of the game. Um, he probably dies here. Yeah, yeah, he actually dies into the spawn fountain, dude. He ran into it, like, dude. He. He ran out of his ulti into a box. That's so tragic. Into the spawn fountain. <laughs> but yeah. That was a really cool game though. Definitely got to learn a lot of things. And so yeah, this was the rank 1 Kane Korea who got permabanned. I don't know what his other accounts are. Maybe like we'll, we'll get to see this guy in the ladder once he climbs back. Who knows. But, um, yeah, anyways, hope you guys learned something. 
If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And hope you guys enjoyed those kind of videos. And yeah, I'll see you guys around. Peace.